right, I'm back. Uh, for those of you new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Uh, it took a while for me to get this video together, uh, but uh, finally I got it done. So in this video, I go over the water system that I put in the back of my uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Again, this project was something that I worked on over time and I didn't get it all on film, but I try to show at least the basics of how I put it all together uh, to give you an idea of uh, how you could do something similar. So I hope you enjoy. If you haven't already, um, you can check out some of my other videos um, where I show how I made the drawer system there and uh, a few other things that I've done to the Jeep Grand Cherokee. I mounted the fill port for the water tank uh, on the rear bumper here. Um, I installed a gravity water inlet that they, they, they use for like uh, trailers and campers and things. So the tank that I'm using is uh, has to be vented, it's not a pressurized tank. So this has two holes, one where the you pour the water in and then there's a small vent hole so that air can come out of the tank while you're filling it. So that's where you just um, put the hose in and fill it up. Now if we work our way down from there, underneath the car, you can see uh, the two hoses that are attached to that fill port. So the green and white one is obviously the water hose, and then if you see the thinner black one, that's the air vent. Um, so those travel over to the tank. Uh, the tank has four ports. Um, I've used three of them, one for the air, uh, one for the fill tank and then one for the hose that comes out which is this gray one that travels through the vehicle and then um, that's the hose there as it uh, attaches to the water pump. Conveniently there was actually a port already uh, in the vehicle I didn't have to drill a hole there's there are these plastic caps you can see there so I just drilled a hole in the plastic and uh, fed the hose through that and then there's the little strainer filter attachment and here you can see I'll show you how I um, attach the water pump so in my vehicle there's actually some type of a I think it's an amplifier for the audio system there which had a bracket so I was able to remove that bracket drill a couple holes and attach the little water pump you see there to that bracket uh, which ended up working out really well it's just a small pump I got off of Amazon. Um, the hose and um, spray nozzle as well came together. As you can see here, this is the plastic uh, little cubby that goes there. I uh, cut that out a bit um, so that the hose and the pump would fit in there. As for the electrical uh, for the pump, I installed a auxiliary battery system that charges from the car, which I'll show you in a second, and uh, just ran the wire across and connected it into the fuse box. For the battery setup, uh, I just got one of those little Duracell batteries, and I found this really cool little harness on infotainment.com. Uh, that plugs into one of the cigarette ports and I connected that to this little Taconcha tow charger um, and then that connects over to the um, fuse box. So 
So here on the passenger side is where I installed the power switch to the pump and the voltmeter for the auxiliary battery. The 12 volt DC cigarette lighter is where I got the power from, um, from the vehicle. So that's the little harness. If you unplug from the cigarette lighter and then the, the, the harness essentially splits the power. So you can power the cigarette lighter as well as the charger that is attached to that auxiliary battery. And then the main power from the battery is connected to the fuse box and then I've got a few things including the water pump that are plugged into that. To secure the battery I strapped it down to um, a lid I had from a battery box and um, there's actually a, I believe it's an M6 uh, factory bolt that you can see sticking up there. Um, so I grabbed a, an L bracket that I had lying around and that um, bolted that down to uh, secure it into place and it seems to be working really well. Alright, now on to the tank. So here you can see on the right is the port that is plugged that's not being used. On the left is actually the hose, so that's connected to the water pump. I covered the side of the tank with some heat shield uh, since it's rather close to the exhaust and I haven't had any issues with it so far. Um, the bracket that the tank sits in, um, I actually made, uh, did a little bit of welding, put that together. There's a picture of it, so it's got uh, two connections in the back for two bolts and then two in the front and the tank just kind of sits in there and um, presses up uh, into the top of the vehicle. So here's a view from the other side. And here's the tank not in the bracket. Uh, I put some flannel on the bottom there. And that's the heat shielding, the pipes, the upper two ports. One, the big one is uh, the fill port and the other is the air vent. As far as attaching it, I ended up drilling a couple of holes into the frame and installing rivet nuts. So that's where the back of the bracket bolts on. And then for the front, I put two brackets. I don't know if you can tell, but it's an L bracket there that's actually bolted into the hitch bar. And then that's also got a rivet nut in it. And across the two of those, I ended up bolting a, another piece of metal, which uh, I'll show you in a second, that the front of the bracket attaches to. So here you can see me um, mounting the back of the bracket. So those are M8 uh, stainless steel bolts that I use. The rivet nuts are also stainless steel just to avoid any rusting. Um, it's a little tricky finagling all this to get it in there, um, but it's doable. And I don't know if you noticed the cutout on the left side of the bracket there, but that's that helps with getting the tank to fit in there. Um, there may be a better way of, of doing this, but uh, this is what I ended up with. So tightening those down from the front and then squeeze the water tank into place and then go to work on the front side. So to mount the front, uh, I used a jack there just to kind of hold things in place a little bit. And then this here is the crossbar that I mentioned. So this bolts into the two L brackets that are attached to the trailer hitch bar. And those are also uh, two stainless steel M8 um, bolts. So one screws in on this side, and then we've got one. Uh, the footage is not super clear, but it's the same thing on the other side. And then I attached two riv nuts also to that crossbar, um, which these two bolts 
attached to. So those go through the holes at the front of the bracket. I don't know if you can see there, but um, those are going into two rib nuts that I installed there. And then I use Loctite on all these bolts because um, obviously there's going to be a lot of vibration back there. So just to help lock them in. And there you have it. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And um, if you had any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave them below and I'll uh, try to respond as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.